<laughs> um, a little bit about me. I am a wife of almost nine years, like next week. I'm a mom of two, a six-year-old and an almost four-year-old. I work full-time as a paraeducator in a special ed classroom. I coach junior high softball. I coach junior high volleyball, and I'm a prom sponsor. So I'm very busy, usually, <laughs> normally, anyway. Um, with my fitness, I've tried everything that you could probably think of. Um, it works, you know, all of that other stuff. <laughs> and I've always been a yo-yo dieter. I would start good, but my biggest problem, I think, was I would do it all at once. So I thought I couldn't have a cheeseburger and work out. Like, you just don't do that. And you have to cut out pop. You have to cut out fast food. You have to cut out literally everything. But I learned pretty quick, obviously, that does not work. Um, yeah, probably between 2016 and 2018 was my heaviest I've ever been in my entire life. I was an athlete in high school. So um, I was pretty fit then, and then life happens, and <laughs> you have different priorities after you get out of high school. And um, I was so mentally unhealthy. I would beat myself up. I was not happy. Um, I felt like a terrible mother most of the time because I just feel like I flew off the handle at anything because I just wasn't happy with myself. Um, so then I stumbled upon Brooke, which I used to go to church with Brooke's family many, many years ago. Um, and so I just started watching her stories and I watched Brooke for a long time before I reached out. Um, and it was actually on a new coach sneak peek, I think, that I decided that I wanted to join and talk to my husband. And we joined, well, I joined. <laughs> and then that was October of 2019 at the end. And I've been coaching since, but I don't think I really started coaching until March when COVID hit because I had a lot of time to do it. So I put more effort into it and I saw the... Um, possibilities of the business. So I really just kind of went running <laughs> and really haven't stopped or I'm not going to. So <laughs> I guess that's a quick snippet of me. I can go next. Um, I'm Kelsey and I have been a coach since July of last year. So coming up on the one year mark, um, I'm not a mom or a wife or any of that, so I kind of am different in that sense. Um, but I started when I was a junior in college, um, and it was the summertime, and I remember going on spring break with um, my at-the-time boyfriend and his family, and I went to go put on a pair of shorts, and they didn't fit, and that was like my first moment. Much like Brittany just said, like I was active in high school, and I just never had experienced this, um, like change in my body. And I really wanted to start taking care of myself, but I wasn't quite sure how. So I had been following Dana um, and had just been super inspired by her story and her transformation and just how positive she was. Um, and so I was watching and I was watching pretty silently. I like it here and there. Um, and then finally she reached out and her first message to me was actually like, hey, what's that Bible study you're doing? I want that one. And so I, you know, we had that conversation and then she reached out a little bit later um, and invited me and I kind of pushed it off. I was like, oh, I'm not quite sure yet. You know, broke college student, not sure if I can afford it type of situation. Um, and then she kept inviting. And then finally I did a coach sneak peek. And once I did that, it was like, I want whatever these people have. Like I saw Brooke on there and I saw Dana on there and everybody was just so excited about what they were doing. And it just seemed like such a cool opportunity for me to really start taking care of myself. Um, and I remember like watching that night laying in bed and I was like, I could do this, you know, like it doesn't seem like anything crazy that I couldn't handle. Um, my major is in communications. So I felt like I had somewhat like background in marketing and social media and stuff. And so I thought, you know what, like this could be a good fit. So finally I did it. I um, bought myself the challenge pack for my birthday. So it was like a birthday gift to myself. And then again, kind of like Brittany said, um, I was coaching off and on, um, but not super regularly. Like I would invite when I had the time 
AK when I was bored in class. <laughs> um, and then I would, you know, like forget to follow up maybe. And then I was not always doing my workouts. I started with morning meltdown 100 and I did a hundred workouts in a hundred days, but I did not do it a hundred days in a row. Some days I was like totally skipping four days in a row. And so not super consistent, but once I like finished that, I fell off. And um, it took a while for me to get back on track and like really want to do this for myself again. The holidays had hit, I was doing so much traveling. Um, and then I went and moved into the dorms and that's when I was like, okay, this is your time to keep taking care of yourself. So that's my message, like you can fall down and get back up. Um, and so I started to do Transform 20 in the dorms and then COVID happened. And then um, I had some family staying with us at my parents' house. And so I wasn't able to do my workouts because like all of the places in the house were filled. <laughs> so I fell off a little bit and then um, they went back home and then I was able to like really kick it into high gear. And I knew first I had to start taking care of myself before I could do inviting or whatever else. So I pretty much devoted all of April to doing my workouts, drinking my shake and like really taking it seriously, doing my social media and just sharing it. Um, and then by the end of April and May, I felt super confident. And so I felt like I was able to start inviting again and taking that route and really start coaching. My team exploded in May. <laughs> it was so cool to see what happened. Once I put in the work, um, I graduated college in April. So that gave me like a little bit more free time. And then obviously COVID had me kind of like sitting here cooped up. I was craving the community. And so, um, yeah, the whole month of May was just incredible. Grew my team a ton, and now I'm looking forward to doing that again in June. So, my name is also Brooke, and I'm sure most of you guys in here know me. Um, I have been in here, not on the coaching group, but on like Brooks in Brook as one of Brooks challengers since December of 2019. Um, I had been doing beach body workouts for years, but never really fully committed. I kind of tried to commit for a while just previous to coming on with um, Brooke and really was just missing the community. So it wasn't working for me because I didn't have people. <laughs> and I finally reached out to Brooke because obviously I'd been watching her forever. She and I, I was, she was one of my campers when I used to work at Bible camp and she was in my cabin when she was in the high school group. So um, I had known her from a long time ago and was following her. Obviously she had an incredible transformation. I was so inspired by that. Um, so I reached out to her mostly um, because she was sharing about the community that she was a part of. And that was the piece, that was my missing piece. Um, and I was really looking for that. Like I would see in her stories, like the virtual gym that you guys all work out in the morning. I was like, I want that, I need that. So I finally reached out to her and um, came on as a customer first because I really wanted to focus on my own journey um for a while and the eventually i just was like i'm ready i just want to do the coach thing so i ended up signing up as a coach in february um and really didn't let's see march april no april may june so really didn't actually start feeling like I was getting traction or getting anywhere until um, April. April, I hit Success Club. May, I hit Success, Success Club. In June, I hit Success Club like day two or something. Day one was Success Club and then day June 2nd was Success Club eight. And I was like, what? So um, all because, you know, I, I was hearing all these coaches say, like, <laughs> you really can get, fit this in in the cracks of your day. I'm a mom. I'm a wife. I nanny. And I for we always have the neighborhood kids over here all the time. So <laughs> I'm incredibly busy always and always have my attention in, like, a million different directions. And so the fact that I was able to just do the work in the little cracks of my day and then see the fruits of that months later was really, really incredible. Um, I 
started with bar blend when I started my um, fitness journey, loved it, had incredible results and just shared that. <laughs> and here we are today. So it's a little bit about me and my, how I got here. Awesome. I love it. Okay. First question is all about social media because I think it's safe to say, I remember for myself and almost every new coach starting out, like even if you are posting about your kids or your pets or college life or whatever, like it's very different when you start to post about yourself and this and fitness. So how did you guys, and you can answer in any order, how did you get over your fear of putting yourself out there and start sharing on social media? And then kind of off that, like, how have you found your voice as well? Or, you know, because there's a lot of voices on social media and you guys are watching lots of coaches and it's easy to like sound like want to copy and sound like them, but I feel like you guys have all found your voice. So kind of the first part is how did you get started or how did you get over that fear and start? Well, I'm not really shy. <laughs> I'm just not naturally. I am just a social person. Um, but when you are posting yourself working out or um, you're, I mean, just anything, but really like your before and after pictures, like that's the scariest thing you could ever do, especially when like you're uncomfortable. Um, like, I hated my body when I posted those pictures. I'm like, oh my gosh, how did I let myself get there? Um, and you're going to be judged. People already don't like you. Um, and that's just the fact of life, but you just have to get over that fear because you're going to inspire somebody and somebody's going to find your story. And they're going to honestly, like, they're going to relate to you somehow. So you just have to keep posting. Like my thing is, is I just try to post like my kids and my day-to-day -day life. I drink coffee every day and I do like these coffee chats <laughs> with myself with random facts. Cause that's just, it's just me. I'm just random. Um, I just, you just have to get over it. <laughs> that's just all I could say is like, you're posting things to show people what you're doing and you're trying to be a product of the product. And if you're not showing the product of the product, they're not going to believe what you're selling or telling them. So you really have to like put yourself out there, let them know, Hey, I'm drinking this, you know, but it's not everything I do in my life. I have this going on. I have this going on. You just have to do it. And just eventually it's going to become second nature to you. And you're just going to, it's like life. That's just, I just post it. I know what I need to post and use your bat. <laughs> I didn't use my bat at first. I think that's amazing it just tells you what to post. Like it literally tells you what you should be doing or talking about. Um, but like I said before, people are judging you no matter if they like you or don't like you, but they're also thinking like, why can't I do that? They're thinking that they're just afraid. And, um, I think a lot of women look to other women because they're missing something in their own life. I know I've looked at people before and I'm like, wow, I wish I could do that or I wish I could look like her, but like you have to be yourself and just put yourself out there naturally and people are going to be drawn to you. So you just have to post and keep it about yourself and real, not like other people like, oh, I know this coach that does this. You have to keep it to your life or they're also not going to believe you. Um, just keep it authentic and be yourself. I love that you said to be yourself because I think that is the the best part about it is like your platform is you. Um, but so my first step when I was doing social media is I told my friends like I'm going to be posting a lot now. And I don't know if this is like normal for everyone, but it's especially I feel like in my age range. I don't know about you guys, but it's like not OK <laughs> socially to post every day. <laughs> and so that was something I had to get over. Like, I know that people post like what, once a month maybe. And so for me to go out and post every single day, I told my best friends, I was like, guys, I really need your support. Like for some reason, having my best friends comment on those pictures and just be like, oh yeah, you look so cute in that, you know, like just asking them and being straight up. Like, I really need your support in this. 
um, I feel like that was the first like helpful step when I was starting out. Um, second thing, most recently, I have been guilty of counting the likes and being hurt by it. Um, and it's been really, really hard and it's weird because we're in quarantine and I just keep thinking like everyone should be on their phone and liking my picture. Like, why aren't they liking my picture? Um, and then Judy Holler came on and like smashed that fear <laughs> to the ground because I'm posting for me. And at the end of the day, this does bring me so much joy and I do love posting it. I probably would be posting it anyways and sharing it if I had five followers because I love it and I think it's fun to make goofy little dance videos taking my energize every morning like that's just one of the things I do and I think it's fun. Um, and then the other thing is I try really hard to not post completely about beach body and about fitness. I know we talk about our five pillars um, and one of mine is beauty and kind of makeup stuff. Um, and I'm just like really I was into that my freshman year of college and then I kind of fell off. And then I was doing Beachbody and I was like, well, I can't go back to makeup and do Beachbody. Like that'd be confusing for people. And I was dead wrong because people want to know all about me, not just that I do makeup and not just that I'm a coach. So I finally just joined the two pages that I had together and it's been so much fun. Um, I love like now I have a day of the week typically that I do a good makeup look and do a full face because I don't have energy for that every day. Um, but I try to have energy for that and do a post with makeup and then like throw some, some makeup or beauty stuff in my stories. And that's just like something that is different for me and my page. And I also work um, in the mental health field. So I feel like that's another thing that I try to speak out about um, a good amount at least. So that's what I would say is like me finding my voice are just those two things that I'm really passionate about that I feel like I have a knowledge of and that I feel like I can speak about. And again, like Brittany said, just staying true to yourself. Like those are things I know. I'm not trying to be anybody else. And when I'm sharing that stuff, I think that's when I come off the most genuine and that's when you get the most um, kind of love from people and people really appreciate that. I've even had some messages. This is really crazy. Like from some guys that I went to high school with that are like, I just want you to know, like, you're just really killing it. I hope that's not super weird, but you're just like really impressive right now, like what you're posting. <laughs> and I think that's so funny coming from a guy who's like 20 and I just went to high school with him. But it's just when you're being honest with yourself and you're being consistent and showing up, people notice it. So that's what I would say is be consistent and ask your friends, your sisters for some help if you need it. Yeah, I love that. Um, just both those ideas of like really just staying true to yourself and being okay with reaching out to people being like, I know this is probably going to come up. I kind of, I did the same thing um, with some of my friends. I showed up just after maybe having made my first couple posts and I showed up to church and some people were like, Hey, what are you doing? Like, what is that? And I was like, Oh, I'm, I was kind of teasing them about it. I'm like, I'm a beach body coach now, you know, and I was like joking around about it. Um, but really those people are really like they're my most consistent supporters and they show up for me whenever I show up on social media. And it's really cool to um, have that support. So I love the idea that you like reached out to your friends and said, I really need your support. I had no idea it wasn't cool to post every day. So <laughs> now I know. Um, but I think for me, I mentioned this before, I started posting about my journey before I was a coach. Um, and that was really important for me because I felt like I never used to be active on social media at all. So for me to just all of a sudden show up out of nowhere, like out of the abyss and start posting all these things about like, you know, whatever, <laughs> it would have seemed really, really not genuine. Um, and it, to be honest, it wouldn't have been genuine. So I, I needed to start posting. And I even told everybody as I was like sharing in my stories and things like that, like, Hey, I'm doing this for my own accountability. This was back when I was, um, doing beach body workouts, but I didn't have the community that I have now. Um, and so I kind of, that was the beginning of my journey was reaching out to, uh, people on social media and saying like, Hey, I'm doing this and I'm going to be talking about this and I'm going to be posting my workouts for my own accountability. And I even said straight up, like, you know, 
I know that some of you are probably just watching this um, like, okay, 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 okay. And I was like, but thank you for watching anyway, because it means a lot to me to see those little circles of all the people that are watching. I'm like, I'm showing up. And those people are watching me show up and it meant something to me. So from the very get go, I did it for myself. Um, and I, and I was honest with people about why I was doing it. Um, and then, I don't know, you know, finding, finding my voice, this has been really interesting because I think <laughs> for a really long time, I believed that I did not have anything worthwhile to say, like, I thought I had good ideas in my head, but then I always felt like um, less than, I guess. And I always felt like, well, if I'm thinking it, someone else has already thought it, so I'm just, you know, whatever. But actually stepping into the coaching role has um, brought me to a different place where I'm like, hang on a second. No, there is something that I carry that people do want to hear. And it might not be everybody that wants to hear it, but there are people who want to hear it. And so um, being true, being honest about the thought processes that I have and being honest about just some of the things that I'm thinking or, or the convictions that I have and putting those out there, I feel like that's been key for me is being honest because if I'm not honest, it's going to feel absolutely disgusting to put it out there personally. Like I just, I can't, <laughs> I can't do it. So. Awesome. I love it. Oh, you guys are doing awesome by the way. Like not even nervous at all. Right. Well, here's the fact you're natural. So okay. I am. <laughs> All right. First, if you like had a brand new coach join and they're like, I want to be successful. Tell me what to do. What are two or three activities you would tell them right away to do? Get your coming out post and post it literally within your first week. Because if you don't, you're not going to do it. And then people aren't going to know why you're doing this. Um, and invite out the gate. Because if you don't, you're going to be like me and start in October and not get your first coach till March. But that's just because I didn't put in the effort and I, I did invite right away and I didn't see, I just wanted people to see what I was doing and then ask me <laughs> who like, what, how do I do this? I remember going to Brooke so defeated. It was like December. I'm like, nobody's watching. She's like, Brittany, they're watching. They're just not there yet. And she was right. When I had the time I invited I just asked my friends like, Hey, this is what I'm doing. Do you have interest? You know? And it was more so when people would come to me and be like, Hey, what are you doing? Like you have lost <laughs> a lot of weight. And I, I mean, I did 21 day fix and then right into 21 day fix extreme. And I lost, I mean, since October, I've lost 44 pounds. Um, and that's just from being consistent. And so I'm getting people who do reach out to me and ask me what I'm doing. And I just explain what I do. And I, that's how I've exploded. I've actually been very lucky when I've had people come to me and ask me what I'm doing. And I just say, you know, I'm, I join Beachbody. I work out every day. I eat 80, 20. I eat pretty clean. I just, yeah, I just explain it. And they've come to me lucky, not all of them. I've chased a few of them for a while now. <laughs> um, but I invite, you have to invite. Um, sign your spouse up right away. If you have one, sign your mom up, sign your sister up, sign your best friend up. I don't even care who it is. If they're close to you, sign them up. That was my first mistake. Daniel was like, no way. I'm not doing that. I'm not signing up. And then I'm like, dude, we can make a really good income if you would just sign up so I can sign people up under you. And finally he's like, oh, okay, I'll do it. And it's helping. It's I'm putting, he's almost Emerald. Like literally I have one coach he's an emerald and then I need one more emerald and I'm diamond literally pushing from March. So <laughs> that's, I've worked really hard the past three months and I love to see the success of it more so that I'm helping people versus for myself, the income really, I don't care. Yes. I want to hit that retreat because why would you not? <laughs> so, um, but honestly sign your, sign your spouse, your mom, somebody up, get to emerald as fast as you can. 
because that's where you're going to really start seeing the potential and you're going to push yourself even more. Um, I would say we all, I think, know the bat tracker and use it. I didn't use it until May and that was like the dumbest thing ever because look at what happened to me in May. I went Emerald. It was awesome. Um, had tons of people sign up in May just because I was using the bat tracker, just because I was holding myself accountable. Um, but what I failed at, especially before when I was kind of coaching, as I mentioned, like when I was inviting in class, I would be like, oh, I, this girl posted a picture. I'll just send her a message quick and invite her. And then I completely forgot. And I would, now I go back and I see people and I see that I messaged them in like September of last year and I never followed up. And that scares me now <laughs> that I never followed up with somebody. Um, so I would say track who you're inviting and ensure that you're seriously following up with every single person. Sometimes when I'm inviting, I just like screenshot their page as a little reminder, like, hey, write their name down so you follow up with them in a few days. Um, but track who you're inviting. That's huge. <laughs> Brittany's showing you. She does it. Um, and another little tip I would say as starting out as a coach is taking care of yourself, right? And so we can't be helping all of these people if we're not helping ourselves first. And one thing that I specifically coach in my personal gym is Five to Thrive. And I realize I'm saying this now is like Rachel Hollis announced her divorce, which is so sad and horrible. I think we're all mind blown. Um, but Five to Thrive is waking up an hour earlier for yourself to have time in the morning for yourself each day, doing 30 minutes of working out every day. It can even be 30 minutes of a walk on your rest day. Um, drinking half your body weight in ounces of water, giving up a food that you know you shouldn't be having, and practicing daily gratitude. And those are five things that I personally do that just really help me know that I'm doing what I need to do for myself, and then I'm able to pour into my team. And then, you know, add Shakeology onto that, because that's good for you too. <laughs> um, so I would say five to thrive for sure is helpful. And the last thing I would say for a new coach is to be consistent. You know, um, I feel like I fell off so many times and I knew people were watching me and I knew that they saw me fall off. But the fact that I got up and kept being consistent is I think what really inspired them um, because everybody goes through hard seasons in life and you have to be willing to just show that and not shy away from it. Just be honest, but be consistent in your journey and sharing it with them and taking care of yourself. Um, be consistent with your team. Don't, you know, invite a girl, have her sign up and then, you know, not talk to her for a month or two. You know, you want to be consistent in everything that you do. So whether it's the bat tracker or taking care of yourself or your social media, just be consistent because that's what's going to get you to where you really want to go. Um, I feel like during COVID, that was like the time where I was like, okay, I'm going to really, I told myself I can either come out of COVID weaker or stronger. And I just picked stronger. And I knew that the only way to do that was consistency. So that's my best tip for you guys is to just be consistent in all of the little things that we do. None of them are hard. Most of them take five minutes or a 30 minute workout, but just be consistent in what you're doing. And it shows people. I totally agree with everything that you guys said. Um, just follow, like falling in love with your own journey because that's been the biggest thing for me. There are days where I'm like, I, I can't bring myself to do the little things on the bat tracker and I wonder why. And then I'm like, oh, it's because I haven't worked out in two days or I haven't done this. As soon as I go downstairs and I push play and I finish that workout, I'm like back almost immediately. Um, I mean, it doesn't happen every single time I get it. Like I actually just came out of a couple of weeks of like, just this weird territory of like self-discovery, I guess. I don't know. But, um, but yeah, following, falling in love with your journey and sharing on social media. I love what Brittany said about posting that coming out post. My coming out post was so imperfect. I was afraid to call myself a coach. So I called myself a cheerleader. And <laughs> And, um, and it, and it's, but it's okay. Like it's somewhere to start. And it was like that first thing that was like, Hey, I'm doing something. I'm doing a thing. And, um, yeah, so that's sharing on social media and being in love with your journey. I feel like are the two core things that I did that paid off huge. Awesome. Okay. So 
you're rocking social media, you've had a good few months. What happens when you just have those, when you just get told no over and over and over again, and no one is saying yes, and you're just feeling super defeated? How do you get past that? Because I think we've all been there a time or two or 10. Keep stalking them. They will say yes. No, I'm just kidding. But seriously, though, don't, don't stop because I have heard no from probably all but like three of my coaches. I've heard no. And eventually they're going to come back and be like, okay, I, th- I need to do this for myself. And then they're going to be ready. So you're going to hear no, but don't stop reaching out. You have to sometimes build those relationships with people first, even your friends, because they, they may not trust the, the process or the journey. So you have to build the relationship. So check in on them, see how they're doing, see if they're having a good week or if they need something, they need to talk and just, you have to make the relationships because especially with somebody you don't know, if you cold invite somebody, you have to be like, so I see you like makeup or I see you have two kids that are around my kids' age. You kind of have to build that trust with them first. Um, especially when they say no, don't, don't stop because I've learned that if I give them a couple of weeks and go check back in, they're going to ask for more information or they're going to say, yes, I'm ready now. And they may not reach out to you. Um, you have to come to them and just keep going. June, actually this month so far, I mean, it's only what the eighth. Um, it's been slow for me because I'm actually trying to build Daniel's account <laughs> um, to get him to Emerald. So it's been slow for me. I've had carts out and people just aren't responding or they're just like, Oh, I forgot, you know, and then they can push it out even more. Um, but I just keep checking in and making those conversations and you just, you're going to get down on yourself, but you have to remember it. It's a process. And how many times did it take your coach to get you pulled in? Um, I mean, granted, some of us just jumped in. Um, I just jumped in. I was like, let's just be a coach. Why not? Um, the discount obviously pulls a lot of people in, um, in this sale right now, you guys, this, the sale in June is so important. Like that's $20 off. You can start a business for $140. That's crazy. (laughs) Um, and you can work on yourself in the process. So I think it's just important to just not give up on yourself. I've been there. I've wanted to give up. Um, I'm glad I did not because it finally has come to light for me. It's yeah, just be consistent. Consistency in this business is key in everything that you do, especially inviting and talking to people. And I was just telling Brooke, I think I messaged her yesterday or today. It's like, I'm just cold inviting people now. I don't even know. I'm just, Hey, what's up? Do you watch my stories? (laughs) Do you want to, you want to chat? You just have to do it. I mean, I guess I just go out there and you just have to. I love that. Yeah. You definitely do just have to get out there and do it. Um, for some reason, my like first week of June has been somewhat slow. And I think part of that is like, I'm not putting myself completely out there to invite. So remember that, like, if you're not getting a bunch of yeses, maybe it's something that you're doing as well. Like maybe you need to step it up a notch. Um, but also while I'm saying like, it's been a first slow eight days. (laughs) Um, Lean into your coach and lean into your team. You know, I messaged Dana and I messaged even Brooke and I said like, hey, in my virtual gym, my girls aren't being very active. And to me, that's also a form of a no. You know, I want them to be really enjoying this. Um, And so lean into your coaches, ask them for advice, um, figure out how they're doing what they're doing and what they do for people who maybe aren't responding very well or aren't very active. Like I have some people who just it seems like maybe this is not the right language but it seems like they suck at using their phones <laughs> like sometimes they just don't respond for weeks or whatever and you don't really know like why um but to stay consistent with that and to take a no with a grain of salt because you have no 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 and then a yes and the yes feels so so good it's so exciting to add a new person to your team and you just have to know that Every single time you get another no, you keep following up with those people, but eventually somewhere along the way, you're going to find a yes and someone who is ready to run with you and start their journey. And then I think 
that is like the most fulfilling thing is when you get to be so proud of somebody who started this with you um, and trusted you to help you with their, or to, for you to help them with their health journey. Um, but know that every single no gets you closer to a yes. And even though you have a no, like Brittany said, keep those relationships. Don't just think like, oh, she said no, you know, I'm just going to let her go and not respond anymore. Because like, especially for me personally, at the age that I'm at, a lot of people can't afford it or they're in college sports. So they're like, oh, I don't really need that or they're pregnant right now. <laughs> so I have all these different like awkward ages. Um, and I feel like sometime in their near future, they could, they could still need it. And they're still watching me. So they're still inspired by me and they'll still tell me that and be um, super gracious and, you know, say, thanks for inviting me, but just not right now, you know? And I feel like if they're giving you that response, then they do have some interest. If they're not unfollowing you, then they still see some inspiration from you. So make sure that you take those no's with a grain of salt. I know they hurt. They definitely hurt. Um, but the yeses feel so, so good. And then some days those no's turn into yeses. I know I told Dana no how many times and here I am. So <laughs> that's what I have to say about the no's. That's always so fun to hear because I like, obviously I've gotten no's, everyone's going to get the no's, <laughs> like you can't do this and not hear no, it's just going to happen. Um, but I feel like for me, like the work of overcoming the no came before even inviting, like I had to be so convinced of what I'm doing and why I'm doing it that I have a full picture that their no has nothing to do with me or nothing to do with what I'm doing. It's whatever, whatever they're going through. Maybe they don't understand what I'm doing. Maybe they don't understand what I'm offering. Maybe, maybe they literally are just not in a good spot to do it right now. Maybe they literally can't afford it. And so, um, yeah, I guess I love what Brittany said too about like keeping pursuing and not, and it's not all just about like, <laughs> you connect every three days about Beachbody. It's like you continue the relationship. Um, but I actually, I was terrified of the no. Like that was one thing that I was like, I don't want to invite people because I don't want people to say no. Um, but once I became so convinced of my own journey and like so in love with my own thing, I was like, if they say no, that's okay. Like, that's okay. It doesn't hurt. Like, it didn't rock my boat, right? Um, when I was convinced, like, I needed to be. If I'm not convinced, like, <laughs> I need to be, then it does rock my boat. Um, so that's when I know that I need to get back and, like, sorry, I was wiping dust off the top of my computer. Um, I need to get back to, like, my own conviction with it. Um, so yeah, I mean, I haven't really had a slow month yet. I've only been doing this since February and really actually started like pushing for things in March or April. Um, and since then, it's been like, I've been picking up, but I am kind of wondering like, how's it going to feel when things slow down? So I'm still learning all that. I don't know. Okay, this is the last question. Um, you guys are doing awesome. So I know you're <laughs> all new, but how... Tips to build momentum. A lot of you have been having good months and have been having your teams grow. Like, what would you say how to find new people and how to build that momentum if someone was asking? I can start out. Um, my biggest thing with having some momentum is having something that's feeding you that you constantly want to share out. Um, for me, that's like a stack of five personal development books. <laughs> um, I just have so many that I love like picking up a different one each night and just kind of pulling something new out of it. And then that kind of gives me something to really like throw out to the world and start spreading. Sometimes that's just like listening to church on Sunday and my Bible studies, or sometimes it's like I was reading this right before we got on the call. Um, just different things like that, but knowing that when I'm growing my mind, then I'm constantly able to share more things with people and help them. Um, and then I also have started connecting, and that's not something I did before, 
honestly, I wasn't really sure what it was. Um, but Megan Brooks coach had explained it, how she will go to like a page that she really likes. So like for her, it was a winery, but for me, it's makeup or like the church I go to and just kind of going through those people and trying to find some of them that have some common interests with you and then, um, following them, shooting them a message, liking a few of their pictures, maybe commenting on one. Um, and not in like a creepy stalkerish way, like really truly getting to know them through their profile has been huge for me. Um, I started this like kind of in a small scale. I started with people that went to my church. So I went to my church's Instagram page and from there kind of found some girls that were maybe my age and might be interested and had some really good conversations from that. Um, and then another thing about me is I really like Taylor Swift. And so I was like, that's like my community. Like Swifties are my jam. I have two on my team because we've met from Taylor Swift. Um, and so I was like, why am I not going to Taylor's page or like some fan pages that I've followed since I was 15 and finding some people that way. And so I've just started to find all these different ways to find people. So whether it was through my church or Taylor Swift or through like, um, I just followed a new makeup brand, Kaja, which they have like the cutest little face stamps. It's the weirdest stuff. Um, but when you find those people that really connect with you on like one, two, three things, then you can have those really genuine conversations with them. And then that just makes it so much easier to not be salesy and to just make a friend. Um, there's one girl that she's like sort of interested, not really, but we talk probably two, three times a week just because we both love supporting each other. She's trying to do makeup. I'm trying to do this. So we just check in and it's been a lot of fun. So definitely connecting in that way has been huge for me recently because I just had no idea how to do it before um, and getting out there and not being afraid to find some people who are complete strangers has been super super helpful. So I have learned from um, Brooke also I think Brooke has mentioned this going to like your stories or your posts in like reaching out to people and just being like, Hey, thank you for watching my stories. I really appreciate your support. Um, I really love it when I see you comment on my posts, it really makes me feel good. Um, I reach out to them that way. And then in the push, the push group for the retreat, um, Megan had said, go to your favorite blogger or your favorite makeup guru or something you like your favorite store, you know, and find people that may have same, like, Kelsey said the same interests as you and just reach out and just like their comments, come on the, on their pictures or watch their stories. And eventually you're going to build those friendships with those people and just go follow them. Um, I also just find people that have like interests, like Kelsey said, it's like moms and people. I love to find people from Iowa and everywhere really. Um, just because I'm, like I said, I'm very social and I like social media for that aspect. I like to meet new people. And so I really, I just am not shy about reaching out. If I like their pictures and I like their content, I'm going to tell them, like, I really like your content, you know? Um, I've really found that I like to reach out to coaches too, like not like beach body coaches, but like people that are interested in like sports, like high school and stuff, because that's something I'm obviously into. So I just reaching out, building those genuine relationships and go to your friends and then go to their friends and see like if they have other people that have the same interests as you. So like, I'll go to my niece's page, who's one of my coaches and we'll just find people, we'll talk and just reaching out in your network of people because there's people that are going to be there and want are inspired by you. So just reaching out, you have to connect and network. Networking is huge. Um, and just letting people know that you're there for them too. Like this COVID stuff sucks. So, um, I am an extrovert that has, it's, I'm dying inside. So, I just like to find people, converse, and see how they're doing during this time because it is hard. So if you reach out and you, during this time and ask them, hey, how are you holding up? They're going to build that relationship with you. Oh, wait, and use hashtags. Like, seriously, use hashtags because, honestly, that's, you may find them stupid. I find them useful because people see that hashtag and they see your post and they come to your page. 
and sometimes conversations start there. Okay, I'm done. Yeah, I second that, the hashtags, <laughs> because I started kind of that and the connecting with other people, commenting on other people's stuff. I know Megan was saying, like, if you comment on someone and then do thoughtful commenting, people see that and then they'll be like, huh, that was a really interesting comment. They click on you and they'll go, I've added people from that. Um, but one thing I'm actually looking to try, and I can't speak to whether or not this actually helped, but I thought it was interesting and I'm really, really excited about it this month. Um, I have a few people that are in the like general area that I live in and we um, on Tuesday nights at 7.30 are getting together, like girls that have signed up with me are getting together for like a socially distant backyard workout. <laughs> And I'm pretty excited about that, um, like once a week. So I'll probably be, you know, sharing about that and things. So I think not only the virtual community, but building like a real life, like live community. I know my coach Brooke has done that, like invited people out and had breakfast and um, people like to see that too. Um, and especially once we can start connecting face to face a little bit more so. I don't know, I'll let you know how it goes and, and if it helps at all, but there are definitely some, some uh, people that might be more interested in that kind of thing than, than only virtual connecting, so who knows. Awesome, okay. Thank you guys so much. I wanna leave it, I know it's about 9.20ish, so does anyone have any questions for these three? Should we cover? I want to say I saw one in the chat, but the chat's gotten really long. <laughs> but if you have one, just unmute yourself or throw it in the chat. I have like just one quick tip. <laughs> this is kind of like small, but I've had some people ask me about it as to like how I take my Instagram pictures and stuff. I have a ring light from Amazon, like $30. You clip your phone into it. It clips onto like the counter or whatever and just makes that social media aspect so much easier. So if you're a new coach and you don't have one of those yet, that's like a really great cheap investment to just go for. It's investing in your business. You'll get the money back. Yep, Brooke's showing hers. You'll get the money back from that like so quick if you're inviting and doing the bat tracker. Um, so make an investment in your business if you feel like that's something that would help you on social media. Great tip. All right, any other things before we wrap up the night? There's a lot of good stuff in there. So, Are you going to ask them if they have a puke goal? No, but you can. Okay. I, I know you ask that sometimes at the end of other calls. So I was like, wait, maybe she's going to ask that. Um, so this isn't for a tip and you don't have to answer, but I'm curious, like if any of you, the three of you have a big puke goal, whether it's in the next like couple months or for the end of 2020. And I see your face, Kelsey, if it makes you puke, <laughs> that's good. It makes you want to like, something comes up a little bit. That's what we want to hear. <laughs> All right. I'm going to hit diamond. That makes me want to vomit, but I want to go to retreat. <laughs> like I really do. Um, so that's, I mean, just thinking about it makes me excited and I know I can get there. I know everybody else could get there if you just put yourself to it. Um, I mean, I'm literally, I'm, I can feel it in my fingertips. I'm so freaking close. Um, so yeah. Diamond would be great. I mean, star diamond, you know, one star is probably pushing it, but maybe not. I could just take off. I don't know, but that would be a puke goal. I haven't told Dana this one yet. I don't think, but I want to be diamond and then I want my mom to be Ruby under me. <laughs> so I don't know when the Ruby is going to happen. I'm really hoping I can make it to the retreat for myself with diamond, but those are like my two big, that's where I want to be. Um, Definitely by my two-year mark for sure. Hopefully more like a year and six months mark. You know, just really quick, you know, Ruby, you, all you need is two more coaches and then you're diamond. Is for me or my mom? For your mom. If you're saying yeah. you want to get your mom to Ruby? Yeah. 
So, but like, so you should get your mom to diamond. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so don't say ruby, say diamond. <laughs> I didn't want to actually throw up, so. <laughs> oh, <that's> <laughs> Everybody wants to skip that ruby. I don't get it. <laughs> Forget Ruby. It's um, my birthstone. <laughs> I have been like in this process of I want to hit Diamond by July 4th, which is kind of nuts because I don't have a lot of coaches right now. Um, I have a couple girls who are interested, so I think furthering conversations um, about that can really get me very close. And then... So that's, I mean, that's my biggest goal and that's less than a month away. So I would really have to hit the ground running for that. But other than that, for the next three months, I'm really hoping this month, next month, and the month after I want to hit success plus 10. At least. That's my at least goal. I was shooting for three months of FC 10, but hoping June can still get there. But. And yeah. I just put in the chat that MBFA, whatever, MBF, MBFA launch is right in July. Like, utilize that. You guys will hit your goals. No doubt. Go I'm away. hitting all the momentum yeah. you guys have going right now. Anyone on this call? Everyone. We're going to have lots of calls about it. But that is going to be huge. a huge launch yeah. for your business if you take action. You can, all, you can sit back and nothing will happen with it. But if you... Do the things that all these three coaches just said do. Woo. It's exciting. Yeah, I'm hitting diamond by July. Like, I, I am. Woo. I don't care. Yeah. That's my goal. At least by my birthday would be nice. July 14th, so. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> it's easy. I can do it. <laughs> I'm almost there. Okay, you guys. I want to wrap it up so we can all get to bed. We're all getting up early for early morning Zoom workout. So thank you guys so much, Brittany, Kelsey, and Brooke. You guys rock. That was awesome. And I will get this recording up probably tomorrow. So good night, guys. Thanks for jumping on, everybody.